the jealousy thing I think is super poignant because I'm someone that's motivated by achievement. Mm -hmm. And I was actually feeling jealous recently. And I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, what is this? Because I am happy for people when they succeed. There's, it really, really, like, I really do believe that. But I was like, why? How did you get there? Because I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. I was not happy for people when mm. they succeeded. I, I like wanted to kill my girlfriends when their kitchens were bigger than mine. <laughs> oh, my God, I was more. I'm dead serious. Like, let's yeah. be honest. Because I, I think that for it, I don't know if it's being in our space, but a lot of the work that my friends are doing is actually deeply in service to people. And it's not in my, I know it's not my gift. Like, so it's like, if there's someone that's doing something close to my space, sometimes I'll be like, damn, like, it's kind of making me feel some type of way. But most of my friends are completely in their lane of gift and talent. So it's like, that's never going to be me. So there, it's easy to think that way. But there is that piece on the jealousy where it's like, if someone's doing close to what I'm doing or close to what I feel like are my gifts, it is like, wow, I'm not going to receive love anymore. Yeah. And I think that's part, I think a lot they're of women have it that. taking away from yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It becomes very personal. Yes. yes. I feel like the brain looks for those moments, those people, those examples. Yes. That will prove that you are not worthy of it or that you can't do it as well as they can. It just makes it so personal and complicated. Yeah, yeah. well, your brain, you've programmed yeah. your brain and so have I to actually do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is a way to program your brain to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. So let me unpack jealousy because first of all, you're way more evolved than I am. I'm a jealous motherfucker. Like this is like in my DNA. Like, like in my household growing up. Yeah. But, you know, my mom was envious of somebody. Yes. So like, mm, okay, that's what we do when somebody's winning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So remember in the very beginning, we talked about energy. And we said that you are designed to be drawn toward the things that are meant for you. You are designed to grow and to expand. In fact, one of the biggest mandates for a human being is to grow. And I love to talk about this because for anybody that feels stuck, I want you to understand what being stuck actually is because... Mm -hmm. 99% of people don't understand it. Mm. So being stuck is a signal from your body. We have fundamental needs, right? You have to drink water. And if you do not have enough water in your body, what is the signal, the feeling that your body sends you? Thirsty. Correct. Mm -hmm. Food, same thing. What do you feel if you need more food? Hungry. Feel hungry, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you feel if you're missing connection and companionship? Lonely? Yes. I'm like, I literally, my first thought was mad. <laughs> I was like, I feel mad. <laughs> so you have these fundamental needs yes. as a human being and your body has intelligent design. It is hardwired to send you a signal mm -hmm. when something that you need is mm -hmm. missing. And one of the most misunderstood signals that your body sends you is the feeling of being stuck. Being stuck is a signal that one of your highest needs is not being met. Mm. And that is the need for growth. Mm -hmm. So most people feel stuck in their lives and then they're like, I need to break up. I need to quit this job. I need to like move somewhere. I need to do something. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Before you pull the ripcord on everything, stop and ask yourself, have I stopped growing? And as dumb as it sounds, simply signing up for a new class, mm -hmm or pursuing something, going to an event, like doing something that energizes you, that re-engages your need for growth as a human being. Going to therapy can be a way because you're learning about yourself. That is how you deal with being stuck. First, let me explain something about jealousy. It is impossible to be jealous of people who have something that you don't want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have the most fabulous penthouse apartment. <laughs> I don't want to live in a penthouse apartment in New York right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am not jealous at all. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it is amazing. I'm super happy for you. I am not jealous. But if I walk into somebody's beach house mansion in this little town we go to in Rhode Island where I covet, you know, owning a house or building a house someday, I am fucking jealous. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason why is because I authentically desire it. Mm -hmm. And here's the mistake we make with jealousy. We put a lid on our desire. Our insecurity is what makes us say, I can't have that. Mm. Those people are succeeding. That's why I'm jealous. What I want you to start to do is anytime you feel jealous from now on, I want you to stop and go, oh, interesting. I'm jealous. What is that jealousy trying to tell me? It's a directional signal. So for example, when I look back on my life and you know, I make jokes about how I was super jealous of my girlfriends who were able to renovate their houses and that you know could go on fancy vacations. And of course, I would um, really use that jealousy in a productive way because I'd always then get in the car after we leave their house and turn to my husband and be like, why can't you be successful? Like, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, and the truth is my jealousy had nothing to do with the kitchen. Mm-hmm. My jealousy, when I really unpack it, and here's how you unpack it, you go, oh, well, what am I jealous of exactly? Mm-hmm. And what is it about that that is something that feels right for me? Mm-hmm. And what it was for me in those years that I was so jealous is I wasn't pursuing my ambition. Mm -hmm. I was aiming my ambition at my partner Mm. and making it his job. And when I finally realized that all these things that I was jealous of were the benefits of somebody working really hard at something, I now had a bridge to cross the divide between where I was stewing in jealousy and pop the lid off my desire, which was to have financial freedom and abundance in my life. And I could get to work on making that happen. And when you don't follow your jealousy toward the things that you want, it will haunt your ass. Mm -hmm. You need to wake up, unpack it, flip it into inspiration, and start taking action in the direction of that thing. Yeah, that feeling of jealousy, I feel... And it's only been in the last few years that I've been able to kind of appreciate the fact that I'm even feeling that strongly about something Mm -hmm. in that way that we see as jealousy. But it's like, oh, I can feel that so strongly because I think that I can eventually create that for myself. So it's almost like... For me, the feeling was focusing on this gap in between where I am now and where I want to be. But... Now it's been really powerful to be like, wait, like this feeling is so real. Yeah. You know, and it's just kind of a matter of showing up, doing the thing, and also just believing that we can. I think that's kind of the. That's where it's like inspiration, because it's like jealousy and inspiration are so related. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you're feeling jealous when you feel like it's not possible for you, but you want the thing. And then inspiration is like the actual belief that you can to have it. This is why this corny high five habit. Is critical because if you stand in front of the mirror and criticize or ignore yourself, you will never feel capable of bridging that gap between where you are and where you want to go. If conversely, you stand in front of that mirror and you go, oh, well, I want to launch a podcast, even though there are 2 million of them. If you're criticizing yourself, you'll talk yourself out of it. If you stand before the mirror every single morning and you take a moment, and you just be with yourself. And you go, what's the game I'm playing today? Mm. How am I going to show up? There's research on that too, by the way. New research out of Harvard says that if you take a minute of intentional reflection and you think about what you're going to focus on today and how you're going to show up, it changes your level of focus, your productivity, and how you impact other people. Mm. So right after you brush your teeth, take that moment of intention. Because what I want you to do is I want you to take mindfulness, which you talk about all the time, Meditation trains you to not be reactive to thoughts. I'm training you how to reprogram the default settings in your mind. I am training you how to make that soundtrack become positive and encouraging. So raise your hand and let all of that programming in your mind, I believe you, I got this, we can do this. You will then leave your bathroom with the wind at your back instead of dragging a boulder of self-doubt with you. Mm. And you will be more likely to take that step. You are forging belief, partnership with yourself by doing this. And that's just the beginning. I mean, there's all kinds of ways. Flipping your mindset, catching jealousy, flipping it into inspiration. 
This is another way to have a high five attitude. It's another way to encourage yourself. Hey, it's Mel. And you know what? I want you to stop thinking about what you want and watching videos on YouTube and actually go out into your life and do something about it. Because action is the answer. And the first action you should take is jump into my brand new free training. It's called Make It Happen. This training gives you the tools to go from thinking to doing. It's packed with science. It comes with a free workbook. And it's exactly what you need right now. More than half a million people are taking it. And the fact is, you do have the power to change your life and I want to help you. All you have to do is click in the link in the caption or go to melrobbins.com slash make it happen. It's free. You jump right in. I'm going to be your coach. I created it for you. Why wouldn't you take this opportunity to make your life better? Go do it. Do not miss out on the life you could be living. Let's make it happen together. First of all, we all misunderstand jealousy. Mm -hmm. You think jealousy is hatred. That's mm -hmm. not what it is all. Jealousy is desire. Mm -hmm. That's all that it is. And when it starts to bubble up and consume you, and it used to consume me like crazy. I used to be just like that person that you were talking about, Jay. Jealous of everybody. Jay, I hate Jay. Jay has a podcast. Oh, for I hate Jay. Jay's been at this longer than, look at all those followers that Jay has. Oh, of course, he lives in LA. Of course, he's got a, like, I mean, I could just, <laughs> woo spin it all. But here's the thing. This is the coolest part about jealousy. You ready? You cannot be jealous of someone or something that you don't truly desire. I'm not the least bit jealous of somebody who has the most extraordinary apartment in New York City. I don't want to live there. It's not meant for me. Jealousy is a clue. It's a directional signal. It's a dot on the map of your life. And the desire is blocked by fear or comparison or insecurity or stress or whatever. And so when you start to recognize, oh, interesting, there's jealousy. Well, I'm jealous of Jay. He's got this incredible podcast that's reaching millions of people. He's making this huge difference. What is it about that? Is it about Jay? Yeah, no, but really what it's about is I've been wanting to do a podcast forever. So instead of aiming that jealousy out at the world or at myself, aim it into inspiration, mm -hmm. aim it into motivation recognize and give yourself permission that if you unpack whatever it is that you're jealous of, I'm jealous of their marriage. What is it about it? Is it the fact that they seem to have a date night? Is it the fact that they're really kind to each other? Explore it, lean into it, give yourself permission mm -hmm. to have that thing and then get off your ass and go make it happen. That's it. Because here's the thing, your jealousy is not going away and it will either continue to consume you or you are going to blow the lid off that block desire and you are going to empower yourself to start moving toward what you want. Mm. That's how you do it. And again, this high five habit is so important because if you stand in front of the mirror and go, I'm too late, I'd just be a copycat, all these people see you dumb, like this is what the beat down is. Yeah. If you go, no, you high five yourself, you're like, I see you, you are a little bit later than everybody else, great. They're guideposts oh, totally. on the map of your life. Yeah. All these people are your co-creators. Everybody you're jealous of is literally somebody that is running point for you. Totally. But you haven't allowed yourself the permission mm. to unpack it and actually question and go on an inquiry that's so rewarding of, well, wow, what is really calling me about yeah. this? Yeah, I, I think that's so true. And I love seeing jealousy that way. And you you said something that was really important that I want people to catch on if they didn't, is jealousy is a tool when you're self-aware. Mm. Like you are self-aware. I don't want an apartment in New York. Hence, if someone has a stunning apartment in New York, I don't feel jealous. But a lot of us, our jealousy is just scattered mm. because we don't know what we want or what our dream truly is. So then everyone's dream feels exciting and better than ours. And that's why I think what you said is so true when people actually can develop a little bit of self-awareness of what is my genuine dream? Because I remember I, I talk a lot about like when you don't find your purpose, you're jealous of everyone. And when you know your purpose, then you become jealous in your space of your purpose. <laughs> and at least it narrows it down. Yeah. But it's like, when you don't know, it's like, I could look at a singer and be like, oh, I wish I could sing. Like, oh, I should have had that. Or if I'm a, and I know I can't sing to save my life. So when I have that self-awareness, I can detach. Okay, 
don't need to be jealous of Justin Bieber. I'm not Justin Bieber. That's okay. Right. Right. Or like Cristiano Ronaldo. I love soccer. I adore soccer, but I was never good enough to play soccer in a right. for a, for the Premier League club or whatever. So I can let go of that, and that's why I think self awareness is so important. It is because otherwise jealousy will just drive you crazy. And, and I think that's where it starts, that jealousy can be a tool when you actually know yourself. Well, and jealousy, let's take this a step further, actually can help you know yourself. Yeah. Because I think what Justin Bieber and, you know, the soccer player have in common is they are living full out. Yes. Their life force is on display. Yes. That's what you're attracted to. Yes. And so if you were to even take all your scattered jealousy and sit with a cup of amazing tea and calm yourself down and, you know, like we haven't even talked about high-fiving your heart, which is a way to yes, flip yes. your nervous system into a calm state and map it all out and be like, oh, interesting. All these people that I'm jealous of that I follow online, that I obsess over, that I like their posts, it's their life force. Yeah. It's, it's their the artistry. It's, it's the obsession the thing. with an yes. art. Yeah. Yes. And so that is there, is, there is a common theme there and it can help you gain the self-awareness. None of us understand what jealousy actually is. And that's why it consumes you and paralyzes you. Um, jealousy is a good thing because jealousy is a directional signal. Jealousy is a signal that there is something that you desire that you're not working on getting in your own life. And I'm gonna unpack this for a second because it's so powerful when you understand jealousy. When you don't understand jealousy and you think jealousy makes you a bad person or jealousy or, and look, I get a lot of people like, if that's not jealousy, that's envy. I don't care what you call it. You know that feeling where you kind of like somebody has something and then you either don't like them or you want it and then you feel bad and guilty about wanting it or then you feel defeated because you have it. All of that is what I'm talking about, whether you call it envy or jealousy or whatever it may be, desire that, that paralyzes you. Um, I used to be consumed by jealousy, Evan, because I was insecure and I did not like myself. And I did not treat myself with respect. So I did not believe I was worthy of having good things. And so I would look around and I would see what everybody else has, whether they had a nicer house or they could go on big vacations or they had a bigger bank account or they uh, had a loving marriage or whatever it may be. And I would feel this wave of envy and jealousy consume me. And the interesting thing about jealousy is that couple things. Number one, if you are prone to feeling jealous, jealousy is not motivating. Jealousy makes you feel worse about yourself and it paralyzes you. But here's the thing I want you to start to flip your mind. I call this flipping it from a jealousy mindset into a high five attitude. If jealousy is just trying to signal you towards something that you desire, then all that jealousy is, is it is blocked desire. That's it. It's just blocked inspiration, blocked desire. It is blocked by your insecurity. It is blocked by your self-loathing. It is blocked by your fear. It is blocked by your mindset. And so this is why the high five is so important because that high five every morning clears away the blocks and allows you to connect back with what you really want and who you really are. And so fact number one about jealousy, everybody, it's not a bad thing. It is a good thing because it is a marker on the map of your life, trying to get you to pay attention and turn your life in a certain direction. Number two, jealousy is just blocked desire and inspiration. Number three, jealousy is deeply personal because you can only be jealous of something you actually want. So I'm not the least bit jealous. Right now I'm using this example. I'm not the least bit jealous our friend Dean, for example, has this unbelievable mansion uh, in this unbelievable town. And I'm not jealous at all because I don't want to live where he lives, right? So jealousy is personal for you. And so I can tell you, for example, I'm super jealous of all of our friends that have podcasts because I've been thinking about launching a podcast for seven years. And when I didn't understand jealousy, I would make my jealousy uh, make me feel worse. I would say, oh, 
Lewis started eight years ago. I should have started eight years ago. Now I would just be a copycat. There's all two million podcasts. I'm too late. I'm too this. And so instead of leaning toward what I wanted and doing the work, I would use that jealousy to keep me feeling paralyzed and angry. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I'm jealous of Evan. I'm jealous of Evan because he is the YouTube master. He understands the platform better than anybody. And so I would look at Evan's channel and I would cross my arms. I'd be like, I'm so jealous of Evan. And then I'd go, he must have a team of 50,000 people. And like, if now that I understand what jealousy is, jealousy is not a sickness of the heart, as somebody's saying. Jealousy is just literally something blocking your heart. That's it. It's not a sickness. It is literally something's blocked. That's it. It's not good or bad. It just is blocked by insecurity. That's all that it is. And your heart is trying to tell you what you want. I want to understand YouTube. I want to put out more content. There's not enough women on YouTube in the personal development space putting out tons and tons of how-to content and coaching content. And we're about to roll into that space. So get ready in a major way, thanks to Evan's help. But when you're blocked by insecurity, you sit in your corner and you talk yourself out of reaching out to Evan. When you realize this is something you desire, you become more empowered and curious and a student of it and you feel equipped. And Evan doesn't become somebody that I look at with envy. Evan becomes a light on the path ahead of me, a co-creator in this marvelous life of mine and yours. And so that is the opportunity of jealousy. Honor it. Back in the day, Evan, when, you know, jealousy would consume me, when Chris and I were struggling financially, we had liens on the house. Uh, he was out of the restaurant business. I was just starting in the speaking business. We were barely making the ends meet. I would go into somebody's house where they were renovating their kitchen, and I would literally want to self-destruct. Literally. And then we would get back in the car, and my husband, you know, would be in the seat next to me. And instead of since I didn't understand jealousy and I, it feels so awful to feel it when you don't understand it, I would literally turn on me like, why can't you be more successful? Why did you have to? Like, I would literally aim it all at so toxic, my behavior, because I just didn't know. And what I realize now is that I was jealous of like people going on vacations and people uh, renovating their houses, not because I necessarily wanted those things, but because I had so much ambition to go build something of my own. And I was not allowing myself to lean into that because of my insecurity and fear. And that jealousy was like a bell going, wake up, wake up. This is, you know, it's not the kitchen, Mel. You want to build something. Mel, it's not the fancy vacations. You want freedom to be able to Take your family places. You want to, you have ambition, Mel. Lean into that. Don't make yourself wrong. It, it, like unpack the things that you're jealous of everybody because it is an invaluable, invaluable directional signal. You're meant for something. And you need to unpack what it is about that jealousy. What is it about what Evan's doing that makes me jealous? Well, it's that I feel like he understands it and he's got this mission and he's got a cadence about it. And I am i could be further from the truth is slapping it all together and trying to figure it out. And, and I realize that there is an excellence and a methodology with which Evan operates that I'm jealous of because I have not slowed down long enough to flip into becoming a student and experimenting and turning toward it. But now I am. Oh, do you want to talk about jealousy? No, go, go. I'll talk about jealousy no, and how I write about you in the book. That's what I was and how jealous I am of you. <laughs> no. It's true. W I am jealous of you. <laughs> I am. So here's the thing I want everybody to understand. We all have jealousy wrong. Uh -huh. You have been taught to believe that jealousy is a bad thing. Right. Jealousy is only a bad thing if you wallow in it and let it kill you. Yes. Jealousy is a great thing if you understand it. And if you use it as a tool to move forward. Yes. Right. You can only be jealous of the things that are meant for you. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like, I'm not jealous of somebody who lives on a ranch in Montana. I don't want to do that right now. Right. I'm not jealous at all. 
I'm not jealous of somebody who lives in a penthouse apartment in New York City. I don't, I don't want that right now. Mm -hmm. You can only be jealous of things that are meant for you. Mm. Jealousy is blocked desire. Mm. And it builds when you don't take action toward it. More and more. Yes. You resent them. Yes. You, yes. And so you aim all this stuckness huh. that you've created because you will not give yourself permission to take action. Why? Because you don't think you're worthy. You don't think you deserve it. You think you're too late. The negative self-talk in the mirror stops you dead in your tracks. And so you become buried alive in jealousy. Mm -hmm. Goes back to this high five. Give yourself permission to have the things that you desire. Let your jealousy, like I'm jealous of Lewis because he started his podcast way back when. He's freaking amazing at it. He's got this like unbelievable impact. Every single day I wake up and I'm like, I love Lewis. I hate Lewis. I love Lewis. <laughs> off Lewis. I love Lewis. Like, why is it Lewis and not me? Why did Lewis do it? Why was Lewis the one sleeping on somebody's couch and started a podcast? Why? I was doing radio back in 2009. This should be me, sure. right? I have a desire mm. to launch a podcast. So you're launching one now? Yes. That's We're good. in the middle of it. That's yes. Good. Yeah. I shook my hand so hard, like I got that like weird thing that happens with your finger when you like <laughs> jam it. So no, you got to give yourself permission to feel jealousy and then just unpack it. Well, what is it that I'm jealous of? And it's the fact that you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. And so I've got two choices. Let that shit out me or do something about do it. it. Let it go or let it go. Either yes. Let it go and stop letting it haunt you. Yes. Or go take action. Yeah, either take action and go earn it uh -huh. and do it your way. Mm -hmm. Or... Let it eat you alive. Mm -hmm. Those are your two choices. Because the other thing about desire and the things that are meant for you, they never leave you. Mm. Somebody who's always dreamt of doing oh, something man, will I'll always dream of something. For 20 years is a good example. And then we got to get to the final questions because you got to leave here in a few minutes. But for 20 years, I every year, I've had the desire to learn Spanish. Oh my God, I have the same thing. If you're going to tell me that you've learned Spanish, <laughs> this is another reason why I'm jealous. jealous of you. For 20 years, I've had the desire, and every year I start to attempt it, and then I quit because it gets too hard. Because it's just not... You, you and I are dyslexic. Yes, it's very challenging for me. Foreign languages you know. for dyslexia is very difficult. I mean, English is challenging. Are you me. telling me you know Spanish now? I'm learning Spanish. So here's what I, here's what I said to myself. For a year now, I said, okay... I know this is not going to happen overnight like it, like athletics happens for me or where it's like quick for me to learn something. I know this has been a struggle in the past, but I'm going to start, I'm going to invest in a coach, uh, a teacher, a tutor. I'm going to work on my time. I'm going to do it the times I can do it. I do it three days a week right now. It's only an hour at a time, three days a week. So it's three hours a week. It's not that much. It's not full immersion. It's not six months and I'm fluent. It's just like the slow process. Yep, yep, okay. But you're doing it. But I'm doing it. I've been doing it for a year. And I still feel like a year later, man, I'm like, do I even know any of this? I still have those moments. But I also know I'm way better than I was a year ago. Yes. I understand a lot. I understand a lot more. And I feel way more confident. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy the process and keep enjoying it. If it takes That's me 10 years. That's a high five attitude, dude. If it takes me 10 years, it'll take me 10 years. That's right. If it takes me five years, three, hopefully it doesn't. But it's the process of I'm showing up consistently I'm seeing the rain and the 5 a.m. on my vision board for Spanish. That, <laughs> and I'm saying, you know what? I'm just going to keep showing up consistently and yeah. little, little wins at yeah, a time. Yeah, I'm embarrassed, but I'm saying it anyway. Yeah. I don't know the word. I'm asking for help, Celebr like all that but stuff. But I'm celebrating the moment. And in three to five years, I'll be thanking myself. Yes. Because I'll be fluent. Yes. And, 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 and the difference is... We gave up every, because I've started a million times. Give it up for 20 years. And I said, I'm not giving up anymore. Right. Because it was still, the desire was still there. Correct. I it doesn't to, leave you, I dude. I didn't need to kill the desire and say, I'm done with this dream. Like, I let it go. And I'm I'll not just, willing to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or I got to actually start doing something. Correct. It took me 20 years to start doing this Correct. one. And it's not effortless overnight, but it's, I'm making it fun. I'm showing up. And well, let's use the marathon analogy. Yes. If you are celebrating yourself and encouraging and empowering yourself every single step of the way and mm -hmm. you're keeping a high five yes. attitude about it, mm -hmm. every single day when you wake up, you will keep going with Absolutely. the Spanish. Yeah. You and I kept quitting because the moment it got hard, we said, screw this, I can't do screw it. Screw it, yeah. We gave up. Yeah. We stopped cheering ourselves forward. Absolutely. It's a muscle. Well, gossiping, I like that. What's that quote that small minds talk about people and big minds talk about ideas? Yes, that's, that's it. So, like, one rule that will make you a better person, 
and it's hard to do. It is hard to do. Is to try at least with your family and your friends. Only talk about the people who are in the room. Like, and so if somebody starts talking about somebody else and it, 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 it's one thing to talk about somebody out of concern or just sort of that reporting in that family members tend to do about one another. Yeah. When it, when it strays into that judgment, we all and we know all know when, when it's there, there yeah. like just say, hey, you know, why don't we just, but they're not here. Right. Why don't we just give them the benefit of the doubt and let's just talk about the people that are here. I don't see you guys enough. Yeah. Let's not waste our time talking about great them. Advice. Like it's just a great way without like kind of me, me, me with somebody to just like direct it back. Great advice. Move it away. So that's one way that I have tried to curb gossiping in my own life. But here's the coolest thing about jealousy. Okay. Embrace it. Hmm. Let me tell you why. Okay. You are only jealous of the things you authentically want. Hmm. So, for example, for a long time in my life, I was super, when we were struggling financially, I was super f***ing jealous of anybody that had a big house or was putting on an addition. And I didn't know what to do with my jealousy. So it would consume me. I tell the story in this book of going uh, into a friend's brand new, you know, house at a time in our life where Chris's restaurants were failing and I was unemployed and we were like, profoundly in debt, I was, it nearly made me self-combust in this woman's kitchen, okay? And how did I deal with my jealousy? Because I didn't know what it was. We get in the car, mm -hmm. and what do you think I did for my poor husband? Why aren't you more successful? I should have married somebody in finance <laughs> like she did. Why are we in this situation? Like, you just, like, aim it at yep. people, right? Because you don't away. know what to do with it. Yep. My jealousy was not about a house. When I finally started to unpack it, it was about my ambition. Very, yeah, very true. And so you cannot be jealous of something you don't want. Mm. If I believe that jealousy is blocked inspiration. I've never heard that before. It is blocked by your fear. It is blocked by insecurity. It is blocked by you have this deep in, like you have this, and, and like you said it earlier, I'm really jealous of this idea, Mel. I wish I had come up with it. Yeah. You have a new book coming out. I'm not going to say what the title is, yeah. but here's what I want you to take away from it. There's something about the simplicity of the idea right. that makes you jealous. Mm -hmm. That is what your inspiration is trying to get you to pay attention to. Very good. So I'm jealous of you. You got this show. Mm -hmm. You have the discipline to do it all the time. You, you're translating it into a podcast. I've been sitting on my ass talking about doing a podcast for four years. Mm -hmm. What the old Mel would do before I understood jealousy is because it's blocked by insecurity, I would then tell myself a story. You're too late. It's already done. There's not enough room for you. If you do it, you're a copycat. Mm -hmm. All of that just blocks what you really want. Really true. Pay attention to your jealousy and stop and unpack it. What really is it about that person? Is it their marriage? Is it the way that they're being treated? Is it how they take care of themselves? What is it about financial freedom and anybody that has it that makes you feel jealous? Hmm. Really get to the core of what feels right for you and then get to work on it. How did you make the leap from being a one woman show to building out Team Mel and growing your business? This is an excellent question. So the hardest thing in business is to go from being a one person show to making your first couple hires. Most of us work ourselves into the ground before we're willing to take the time and invest the money in hiring expertise to support you. And you have to, you have to hire people before you think you're ready, before you think you can afford it. Because when you hire people to support you, in the administration and the administrative tasks in your business, you expand your capacity tenfold. Now, I waited way too long. So I was a one woman show for the first year and a half of my speaking business. And uh, in that first year, we booked 47 speeches. And um, that was great. I kind of fly from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place. But then I landed my first big corporate engagement with a corporate client, JP Morgan Chase, their business banking unit, um, hired me to do like 23 speeches as part of a speaking tour. And it's really different to show up at different events and give the same speech than it is to manage a corporate relationship where you're working with somebody on 23 different events. And that imploded me. 
I went from a one woman show to needing to hire support overnight because I basically had a nervous breakdown crying in the arms of my husband. And he was like, that's it, we're done here. We gotta get you support. The second thing that's always present in moments where I make a just a massive leap in terms of growth in my business, we've already talked about, and that's jealousy. So jealousy is a really important signal as we've just discussed on the topic of dreams. It's also a really important signal when it comes to business. When you realize that you're kind of jealous of what somebody else is doing, it's typically a really important signal that there's something that you should be adding to your business or considering how to add. And for me, what that was is that um, I was really uh, jealous of Gary Vaynerchuk. And I gotta back up a little bit. Gary Vaynerchuk, if you don't follow him, great person to follow, super interesting, super motivational, world's leading expert, in my opinion, on social media and social media marketing. But um, what was happening for me as a speaker is I love being on a stage, don't get me wrong, but what I really love is talking to people after the speech. I love it when people come up to me and ask me questions on airplanes or when I'm checking into a hotel or run up to me in a hallway after I've gotten off the stage and you know want to have a quick one-on-one. -on -one. I love those moments. And I was starting to get the sense that, wow, all the magic is in the one-on-one -on -one conversations. It's not when I'm standing on the stage. Why is nobody else hearing this? And then all of a sudden I saw on social media that Gary and his team were filming these conversations and they were putting them on social media. And I was immediately jealous. And I was immediately frustrated because I couldn't do it myself. So again, here we are. You feel this feeling of frustration because you don't have enough hours in the day and you can't do what you need to do. That's a sign that you need to hire somebody. And jealousy, whoa, they're doing something I want to do is also a sign that you should try it and make it your own. So I did it. I, I found a graphic designer and a videographer I hired them, they traveled with me, and we just filmed everything. And four years ago, I had maybe 2,000 followers on Instagram. Now we've got over 1.2, almost 1.3 million, simply by following the frustration that there's stuff I wanted to do, but I couldn't do it myself. That means you gotta hire somebody. And jealousy, holy cow, that guy over there is doing what I wanna do. I guess I better lean into this because I'm inspired by that and I should be doing it too. It's been there, I'm telling you right now, in every single jump. So it was there in our jump on social media. It was there when I got into online courses. It was there when I got into television. It was there when I got into audiobooks. So pay attention to those things. If you're frustrated because you can't seem to get to the work that matters, hire people. If you're jealous, use that as a signal to draw you towards something in business that's inspiring you and go for it. That's how I did it. Are you procrastinating on YouTube again? I can help you fix that for free. I'm Mel Robbins. I'm an expert on confidence and motivation. And right now you need both. I've been there. You know what you need to do, but you're wasting time on YouTube. Stop procrastinating. Start executing by taking my free two-part training series, Make It Happen with Mel Robbins. Two video lectures taught by me, a 25-page workbook to get you in action. You deserve this. So grab your free spot with me. Just click the link, make it happen. Or you can go back to procrastinating. YouTube will be waiting, but don't you dare miss out on living the life you could be living. Make it happen. Speaking of noise, yeah. especially with social media, and I know you're a force for good, positivity out on social media, but there's the other side. I'm gonna be honest, I can't help but look and see like, oh my goodness, oh, like, yeah. I feel like less than if, if I don't have this, or if I don't have that, or I'm not doing this and everyone's doing this and I'm not doing that. And no matter how much I personally, I'm going to be honest, like I personally work to, you know, align, stay focused on what I'm doing, love myself, be great. I still get caught up in comparing sometimes and wishing I had something that I don't have or feeling like I'm behind because I'm not there yet. I'm not where a male is. I'm not doing this. What is that? Um, that's being human. Yeah. And, and that is your desire. Yeah blocked by insecurity. Mm -hmm. So comparison, jealousy, envy, all that stuff where you put yourself in relation to somebody else yeah. and you use that uh, comparison as a way to invalidate or reject yourself. Mm. That is human nature. Yeah. And um, one of the things that the high five habit can help you with 
because you will never go through a day in your life, I believe, yeah, without looking at another human being and mm-hmm. going, I wish I was as tall and as beautiful and as healthy <laughs> as Koya. I wish that I was meditating every day like Koya. I wish that I, uh, you know, was sponsored by Aloe and had all these amazing <laughs> things that Koya is. I wish I, you know, lived in this incredible neighborhood that feels like a Costa Rican yoga retreat. <laughs> I wish I, like there's so yeah. many things mm-hmm. that like even, like I don't even have a camera set up like this. So I'm like, I wish I was set up like this, like Koya is. So when you start to realize That all of that yearning, Mm -hmm. that is what comparison really is about, is desire that's Mm -hmm. blocked by insecurity. Mm. So when you find yourself comparing yourself to somebody else, and you find it to be in the lane of jealousy or invalidating you or comparison, just take a pause for a second Mm -hmm. and let's flip it with curiosity and let's go, oh, well, what's that about? What's that about? Yeah. And the message that I've gotten loud and clear for myself lately is, oh, I want to get off the road. I want to spend more time taking care of myself and practicing mindfulness and creating content. And I want to launch a podcast. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm jealous of everybody like you who already has a podcast, already has your ratings, already has a ton of people that listen to this. All right. Like I look at you and I'm like, I'm behind Koya. Here Mm -hmm. we go. Here's more evidence. No. Let's flip it and unpack it. Well, what do I what do I love about what she's doing? Yeah. What feels like it's right for me? And then what happens is instead of everybody becoming somebody who's ahead of you in some race, what if the people that you are drawn toward that either it feels a little like jealousy or invalidation or comparison, what if you could flip it into curiosity and let it go, what is it about what they're doing that actually feels like it's calling me? Mm. And what is it about what they're doing? This is important that doesn't feel like me. Right. That part. Yeah, that part. That part's important. Yeah. Because otherwise you go down this huge, long lane that's not for you. Correct. Because you're driven by your insecurity instead of your curiosity. Mm. Because curiosity opens the door for your desire to flow through. Right. Insecurity locks your desire in a cage. Mm. And it eats you alive. Mm. Because when you feel like you're losing a race, you're not motivated to take the actions and to take a step toward what you want. Right. And so um, I think when you flip it Mm -hmm. into Koya is a light on the path of my life. Mm. She's not ahead of me. She is in service of my mission Mm -hmm. because there is something about what she's doing that lights up something in me. And her example is lighting the path I need to walk down. I love that. That's the way that I look at you. And I want to say something else. So yesterday we were at our friend Lisa Bilyeu's house and we have, um, I feel like I have at the age of 53, the female friendships that I have always longed for in life. And they're new friendships. And whether it's Amy, who is sitting on the floor here, who is out of reach, who is a new friend, you know, we both moved to Vermont. You know, I mentioned her in the last chapter of the book, shipwrecked there, uh, thinking we made the worst mistakes of our lives. Or all of our friends, you know, from Glow to Maria to uh, Marie Forleo to Lisa Bilyeu to the Boss Babes to Roddy to just this incredible group of women who, interestingly, were all sort of in the same space of of self-empowerment and self-improvement and authors and content creators. I don't feel competitive with anybody. Mm. I don't feel insecure. Like, I feel so supported and lifted up. I've never had a friend group of women this like this. Mm. And what was interesting is yesterday you and I were talking and you were, uh, you know, just remarking it, how awesome it is to see the high five challenge going with 100,000 people, 103,000 people as of this morning. Yes. From 91 (laughs) countries, uh, 30,000 comments of high fives and people's putting up selfies and allowing themselves to be seen and supported by this community. It's so exciting. We'll talk more about it at the end of this. And Koya will give you a link that you can follow to sign up for free um, and take this five-day incredible challenge. But you said to me, I'm waiting for it to be my turn. Hmm. 
because you're relaunching your book. Mm -hmm. And I said, when are you doing it? And you said, I'm waiting for it to be my turn. And here's something that I want to say about that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful thing. If the waiting is grounded in faith Mm -hmm. that there is divine timing to everything. Right. Because I think we put pressure on ourselves to believe that right now or tomorrow or as soon as possible Mm -hmm. is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm, That's powerful. That's right. And I'll tell you why I say that. And I tell you why I feel the same way. I don't feel any comparison or any cattiness or any of that. That, Of course, I'm sure you felt before and I felt before. And I think it's because everyone is very secure in who they are and what they have to offer. And I'm going to say this because this is very important and I'm just feeling it more because I think we're both calling powerful uh, female energy into Mm. our life as well as all of those Mm. women that you mentioned. Mm. When you are a high powered, high shine woman, I think it's important to know you want to shine your light, but everyone is not going to be on the stage at the same time. Yes. And right now you're on this stage and we're all supporting you and getting behind you and uplifting you. And I think that's really important to call out. And I'm glad you brought that up because I've noticed it's like if everyone's fighting to be on stage, then one, it's not clear because everyone's talking at the same time, you know, Mm. but now we're uplifting you and your book and your philosophy. We still got things going on, (laughs) you know, but I think it's important to know that when you're in a group, how to hold space for other people without it being all about you. And that's what I mean when I say when it's your turn, it's just like speaking. It's like Mel speaks and the next person speaking the next. And I think it's very important, especially when you're calling in more female, high powered, high voltage relationship yeah. is to give everyone their turn. Yeah. And you know what I was just thinking about is how if you think about the history of time, Women always came together to do that, particularly around births. Yeah. Supporting one yes. another in your time to exactly. bring some, bring life to something. Mm-hmm. And I feel that incredible energy with this group. And it's been so life-changing to be on the receiving end of it that it makes me a thousand times more excited to be on the giving end of it. Mm-hmm. But so I wanted to also say, though, that what's interesting for me is that in the you know, when I think about my life, right? And I think about um, the fact that we wrote The Five Second Rule five years ago. And that book never got any press whatsoever. Like literally <laughs> nothing. There was not a, a high voltage female energy. Cause I was not secure with myself. I was not attracting shit. I was in survival mode still. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Go, go, yes. go, 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 go. Literally six years ago, there were still liens on Chris and my house from the uh, financial mistakes that we made and a business failing six years ago. Yeah. As I'm on stages around the world talking about the five second rule, there are liens on my freaking house. Yeah. And so what's been interesting is I have for four years tried to write another book. Mm. I have tried to force it. I have tried because I felt scarcity. I have tried to just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And so when you said that yesterday that I'm waiting for my turn, It made me realize now that I've seen both the four years of frustration when I was trying to force it, it wasn't my turn yet. Mm, That's powerful. And the resistance and the fact that the thing wasn't coming, Mm -hmm. the idea wasn't coming, the it didn't feel right. Like we literally, I literally probably dictated five or six books in that period of time. Wow. Fired by a publisher because I couldn't get anything done. Like just could not happen and the five the high five habit i think again was a moment where after all of that waiting which i got myself through so how do you say what what is this the phrase you say about affirmations the affirm oh changing your limiting beliefs to liberating affirmations liberating affirmations so the liberating affirmation that has really gotten me through these last five years is this moment is preparing me Mm. for something amazing that hasn't happened yet. Woo, that's good. Every time a, I couldn't come up with something, a publisher's canceling a contract, I 
screw something up. I stall out. I see somebody else kind of getting the spot that I thought I was meant to get. I get fired from my dream job, whatever it is. Mm. This moment Moment is preparing preparing. me for something amazing that hasn't happened yet. And it's a way to high five your attitude from that woe is me. It never works out. I'm always failing. Everybody else wins. I'm not part of that club of cool people that help each other. Like uh, the whole thing. Yeah. This moment is preparing me. And I think everybody has been blown away by the fact that how on earth, Mel, were you all of a sudden on 53 podcasts that released all within the same three week window? And I'll tell you why. Because for the past five years... I have been on three. Mm. We couldn't even get publicity for my daytime talk show. And at the at the moment, I'm like, woe is me. See, I'm the bad news bear. See, nobody like even when I have a daytime talk show, I'm such a failure. Nobody wants to actually even write about it. Mm. If you Google the talk show, the only article you will find is when Snooki came on the show. <laughs> that is the article you will find about my show that aired 167 <gasps> times. Wow. And was the number one talk show on WGN in Chicago. And like that, that's what you will find. And I now know, and I would say, Mel, Mel, don't get yourself all up in arms about Tamron <laughs> Hall and Kelly Clarkson and Ellen and all these amazing people that you once loved and now hate because they're beating you to what you thought you need. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't go there, Mel. Right. This moment mm-hmm. is preparing you for something amazing that hasn't happened yet. I love that. And you know what it's preparing me for? Yeah. The High Five Habit launch. Wow. Because that's what God and the universe wanted the world to know about. So your work also focuses on the feelings of disappointment and jealousy. So for Mm. anybody listening who feels this, what are your top tips for dealing with um, disappointment and jealousy? Well, first of all, with disappointment, I think it's really um, critical that you give yourself permission to feel disappointed. Mm -hmm. Because shoving it down and pretending you don't care just builds more and more disappointment in your life. Let it out, punch the wall. I do this all the time, like punch the wall, yell, scream, you know, kind of like whatever you need to do, like just get it out, express your disappointment. It's okay to want things. It's okay to be disappointed when you don't get them. Give yourself permission to want things and give yourself permission to feel disappointed when you don't get them. Mm -hmm. Then you reframe it. Because what I always say is if you're working hard and you don't get what you want, it's because something better is coming. Now you can't put your arms back and say, okay, well, prove it to me. If you're working hard and you don't get what you want, keep on working because something better is coming. And when you anchor yourself there, that's a high five attitude, keep going, something better will come. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not this week, but when you have faith that maybe you didn't get that apartment because the landlord was a real jerk, maybe you didn't get into that dream job or that dream school because that's actually not what you're meant to do. Maybe you uh, had that person break up with you because they were actually cheating on you. Like, Like you just you got to anchor down because the alternative is dreadful. Jealousy is a very important emotion that everybody misunderstands. Jealousy is a very good thing in your life because it's a directional signal that is personal to you. It is impossible to be jealous of anybody or anything that's not actually meant for you. So for example, I am not jealous of somebody who lives in a $50 million penthouse in Dubai. I don't want to live there. I don't care how nice it is. I don't want to live there. I'm not jealous at all. But Emma, I'm jealous of you because you have your own podcast. Like you're out in the world. I've done one for Audible, but it's behind a paywall. And so this is something I've thought about for years. And so jealousy, normally we like, oh, I'm not supposed to feel that. That makes me a bitch. No, no, actually no. Jealousy is a directional signal. If I'm jealous of Emma, And I stop and I go, oh, interesting. Why am I jealous of Emma? Unpack it with curiosity and you'll see, oh, Emma is doing a podcast. All jealousy is, is it's blocked desire. And it's blocked by your insecurity. 
It's blocked by your fears. And most people go, oh, I'm jealous of Emma. That's a bad thing. I won't think about it. Notice jealousy doesn't go away. It just gets bigger because it's trying to get your attention. The only thing that will get jealousy to disappear is allowing yourself to unpack what the inspiration is and then start taking actions to go get it. So I'm no, I'm no longer jealous of Emma because Emma is a light on the path that I'm meant to walk down. That's why I'm drawn toward her. I love this. And um, to be honest, I've never heard jealousy described in that way before, but I love it because it's so true. So thank you for sharing that. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I think just like you say, if everyone can adopt that attitude and think, yeah, actually, and I always had this good phrase, actually, which I always use for comparison. And you always, like when you're seeing someone who's where you want to be or they've got something you want and you go, good for you and the same for me. And I loved that because I thought that instantly dispels that, well, you've got something I want and I can't have that. It's actually, yeah, good for you and the same for me. So amazing what mm. you said, it really resonated. So how many of you struggle with a bit of comparison and jealousy? Yeah, all your hands should go up. That's right, because we all do, right? So you wanna know a cool thing about jealousy? Jealousy is like the coolest emotion because jealousy tells you what you want. I'm not talking about envy, like I hate her, she doesn't deserve that. Da, 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 da. I'm talking about that like, oh, I wanna be doing that. Oh, I want, oh, oh. You know, you can relate to that feeling, right? That like, oh, when's it gonna be my turn? Oh, I want that thing. So here's the cool thing about jealousy. You can't be jealous of somebody unless you want the thing that they have. So it's personal, so personal. My daughter, who is a singer songwriter, that's what she's studying, she's a junior in college, she's so jealous of anybody that's on tour. She's so jealous of people that are doing the work and putting out their music. I am not jealous about that at all. My voice is terrible. Like if I sing a hymn in church, people are like, you need to pipe down over there because you're ruining this moment for me. I am not jealous of somebody who has a penthouse in Abu Dhabi because I don't want to live there. That is not what's meant for me. Let me tell you what jealousy actually is. Jealousy is your deepest desires and dreams blocked by your fear. Jealousy is your deepest desires and dreams blocked by your fear. Your fear, your insecurity, your imposter syndrome, your past trauma, all that garbage, it has put a lid on what is meant for you. And so when you feel jealous of someone or something or some opportunity and you feel yourself putting the lid on and you feel that negative energy coming on, you need to, again, use the five second rule, count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, take control of the moment and then flip it and go, oh, interesting. I'm not actually jealous. I'm inspired. Like that's my desire. That that, that person is evidence. And here's the other thing. Y'all live in the coolest moment in time. You can literally stalk people online legally. (laughs) You can learn from anybody. You know, when I was your age, if you walked into a bookstore or a library and you checked out a self-help book, whoa, that was embarrassing. Personal development is like the coolest thing in the world. You can listen to podcasts for free. You can literally research any subject on the planet from neuroscience to launching a business to how to monetize and and make money on Instagram to how to install a Shopify account and makes it like you can research anything. You can follow anybody's footsteps, reverse engineer it and start walking down the path. It is so cool. And so the only thing that's going to limit you in terms of you doing the work to have everything that you want in your life is your fears. Now, I'm not in the land of toxic positivity here because I know that there is a lot of realities around money and time and obligations that you have to help out family or stuff you have to deal with in terms of mental health. I totally understand that. But I want you to hear me loud and clear that you can make anything happen through your actions and your attitude. It may not take a year, it might take 10 years, but it's through action that everything changes. I had one of those feelings this morning where I felt really alone and then I realized that the feeling that I was having is something that everybody struggles with in the age of social media. I 
got up, started my morning routine, and then I checked uh, my phone because I wanted to see if my daughter had texted me back. And that just, of course, led right to scrolling through social media. And as I was scrolling through social media, something happened that happens to me all the time. Instead of being inspired and entertained, I started to feel discouraged, a little lost and overwhelmed. I started to see examples of lots of people out there that are doing incredible things with 10 times the followers that I have. Yes, even though I reach a couple million people a day on uh, all the social media platforms, I still struggle with insecurity about whether or not I'm good enough, whether or not I'm doing enough, whether or not it's going anywhere. And I think that this is an important thing. I don't think your insecurities ever leave you. I think that they just level up. If you care about what somebody else is doing, whether it's the car they're driving, the kitchen renovation they're doing, the money they make, the relationship that they have, the number of followers they have, the kind of business they have, the kind of health that they have, if that bothers you, that's important data. Because what we typically do in those moments when we feel jealous or we feel insecure or we feel unworthy or we just start that beat down mentally is we don't stop and go, whoa, there's something in this moment and this pain that I'm feeling that's trying to tell me something. And what my insecurities are always trying to tell me is that there's a level up moment. There's something that I really desire to do that I see that this other people, other person's doing. And those painful feelings are really important because they're waking something up inside of you and saying, you know, you do want to play a bigger game, Mel. It is time to figure out how to do X, Y, or Z. And this is true for the whatever insecurity you're facing. If you feel jealousy, insecurity of what you see online and you start to beat yourself down, stop. Use that insecurity to level up. Lean into the uncomfortable, painful feeling that you're having and unpack it and figure out what is it trying to tell me about what I actually desire. And instead of beating yourself down, if you were to give yourself permission to have this desire, and use your energy to figure out how to go make it happen for yourself on your own terms. That's how you use your own insecurity to level up the game that you're playing. That's what I'm going to do this morning. Um, that's how you see the good, even in the painful feelings that you have. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for checking this video out. And if you like this one, I have a feeling you're going to like this one too. I'll see you there.